Danny, are you gonna intro today's video? You're doing an excellent job standing in for focus, thank you. <laughs> Don't know why I got really excited there. What I'm gonna call a bedroom refresh. That's what's gonna make the biggest difference in here. We did a thing! Hi everybody! Say hello, Danny! <laughs> Alright. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you guys through the process of a little bit of what I'm gonna call a bedroom refresh. I don't wanna call it a full on bedroom makeover because the overall layout is gonna be the same. Like the furniture's not moving, I'm not actually swapping out any major furniture, but I do think the end result is gonna look quite different, which is why I'm filming the process. I recently did my bathroom makeover and filmed that whole process and you guys really liked that, so I thought let's do it again with the bedroom. The biggest overall change that's gonna happen is like a color shift in the palette of the whole room. Right now it's currently very blue and gray, but also the furniture is warm tones, so it doesn't even work together that way, and I wanna make the entire thing warm tones. So before I take you through what I wanna change specifically about it, go ahead, give this channel a subscribe if you like makeovers, DIYs, style, all that kind of stuff, because it happens here, and I'd love to see you around more often, so go ahead, give this channel a subscribe. We're really trying to hit two million this year. Alright, so the room, sorry, these floors are very squeaky and you're just gonna have to hear that. <laughs> so when we got this house, some of the walls are like this gray blue color. I don't know if it's easy to tell on camera, but it's very much a cool tone blue. And then the middle wall and ceiling is white. I didn't mind it, but now that it's winter, I just feel like this color is too cool toned and like, I don't know kind of a little depressing. So I wanna bring warmth into this room. So the big thing is gonna be painting anywhere that it's this blue color, like a warm tan color, I think is what we're gonna do. Maybe to match my dog. Okay. And then if you'll notice, over time the baseboards, all like the paint is starting to chip off, so I'm gonna to have to repaint those too. I'm gonna to be repainting over this circle on the wall and bringing in a new headboard that's gonna be like this color brown, I think. This platform bed that was an old DIY, which I still love to bits, is this like kind of teak wood color, which I love so much. So I think I'll do the headboard in a brown that matches that color. And you'll notice our bed doesn't really have a duvet cover on it, and all of the pillows are blue because I was trying to work with the wall color. So one of the big DIYs I wanna do is redo the bedding, which might involve DIYing a duvet cover from scratch, and then swapping out some pillows. I also wanna get rid of these blinds. They're a little bit dated, and plus they just, they aren't helpful. They're just these like plastic kind of pull-up blinds, but even when, they're all the way closed, so much light gets in anyways, and in the morning, if you're ever on a weekend trying to sleep in, good luck, because I love the sunlight that comes through this window, but it's super bright. So I think I wanna replace this with a pull-down roller blind that is, um, what is the word? That is, oh my god, why can I not think of it? All I wanna say is black light, but that's not it. Light blocking, black, blackout! That was a doozy. So I think I wanna replace these pull-down blinds with a blackout roll-down curtain and then I think do curtains around, not even for like usefulness, because the blind will be what's useful, but just so this wall has more going on right now. It's just kind of empty. This back wall overall, I'm really happy with it. We have a lot of beautiful plants that I love so much. This like bench table thing was from Ikea a couple years ago and I still love it so much. This artwork I had commissioned by an Etsy artist, which I can link her below, and it's so beautiful but somehow the art in the frame has slipped down, so that just needs to be fixed on my part. This wall as well, I still love a lot. The only difference is that this wall needs to get painted as well because it is that blue color. And then one final thing I'd love to add here is a little accent chair somewhere, just because we have a tendency as a family to put clothes on the floor because they're not dirty enough to go in the laundry but not clean enough to go back in the drawers. And by we, I'm talking about the other person, not me, not you, that shares this room with us. And I think that having a little chair to um, put things on might just really help with that problem. Plus it would just be like really aesthetic to have it. 
So now that we know all of that, I think the biggest and first thing that I want to start with is the paint. That's what's going to make the biggest difference in here and it's really going to set the tone for the rest of the DIYs that are happening in this space. So once I have new color up on the wall, then I'll really be able to know what we're working with and what other colors I want to bring in. So because I'm nervous about doing the colored walls first. Let's tackle the white. Now the white isn't something I even really wanted to have to do, but in a vlog I showed how I painted this lovely circle on the wall and I think we're gonna have to paint over it. I know we're gonna have to paint over it to get rid of it because it's just paint on the wall, but I don't have the white that is this room currently because it came this color with the house. So I think any white that I pick, even if I try and match it so well, you're gonna see a seam. And the problem with this room is that it has this lovely arched ceiling which I love so much architecturally but for painting it's a nightmare because there's no natural place to stop your paint like there would be on walls that are like you know have proper angles in a room so I think if I start painting over this I'm gonna have to do the whole thing we're gonna have to do the ceiling and down on the other side <sighs> So we might as well get started with that because I think it's going to take a while. Alright, first step is going to be moving everything away from this wall so we can paint it. Do I want to take those lights down and the floating nightstands? Well no, the answer is no, but should I? I don't know. Let's tackle the easy stuff first. I get asked a lot what white paint I use for my whole house and the answer to that is white veil. It's a bare paint color and it's a very warm tone white, which is what I like. All right, it's many days later and I finally finished painting this room white or like three fourths of it white. So this wall and then the whole ceiling and then over onto that wall. All got painted white because like I said there was no where to actually stop the white so we just had to do the whole thing but yeah I think it looks good it looks better now that it's like one uniform white oh and I did baseboards got painted as well so that looks so much cleaner too that they're not all scratched up oops that's dry paint I just need to vacuum it up <laughs> my bad okay so now we need to move on to painting the remaining two walls which you can see are still that blue gray color. What I want to do is kind of like a terracotta color, almost kind of like the color of my bag. But I do worry that something like that will be too dark. And I know if you paint walls dark, it can make rooms feel smaller, and that's like the last thing I want to do. But I really love that color. I think it's going to make this room feel much warmer. So I think the best plan is to go to the hardware store and look at all the options and see if I can get somewhere around that color, maybe a little bit light. All right, let's go. It's pouring rain today. It's so fun. All right, I've narrowed it down. I think this is too pink and this is too dark. So now I don't know. These two are a little cooler tone. These are a bit this one are a bit peachier. I really like this one. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna grab a couple different samples and put them on the wall. Okay, decided. Gonna go with these four as samples to get made. All right, I am back with some paint and we were talking on the podcast recently about paint colors and who gets to pick the names for paint colors and I have to say some of these are some pretty good names. So we have Thai iced tea, sweet curry, City Sunrise, and Butter Rum. That one just sounds like it tastes good. <laughs> so next step is I'm gonna do some samples on the walls and see how they dry. And then the good thing is that it's, well, 3 p.m., but I'll see how they look tonight. And then tomorrow when it's really bright and sunny, I'll see it in the daylight because I feel like paint can look so different when it's a nice bright day versus dark evening. So we're gonna, we're gonna see it at all lights before making any real choices. Ooh, this is my darkest one and I really like it. I'm hoping the other ones maybe aren't all too light now. Ooh, already I'm like, nope, that's a little neon.
Oh my god, this is the same color as this color. Okay, it's not, but it basically is. Hmm, okay. One more to go. All right, it's the next day, and I'm pretty sure I know what color I want to do now, but I am surprised. This one, I think, is my fave, but it was my total wild card because it was the only one that felt a little bit cool tone compared to the rest, but after seeing them all, these are just so bright that I don't think it's gonna create a peaceful environment in the bedroom. They're just almost like neon peach colored. And then this one I like, but do you see how blotchy it is? And that was after two coats where all these are one coat. So this I think is just gonna be a pain to work with. Plus it's a little bit dark. So I think it's gonna be this one, which was City Sunrise. I also did my two top faves over here just to make sure it's City Sunrise. And then this is the other one. And like, look how, ooh, two coats still. And it's so not even, which I feel like that's gonna take me forever if I want to use that color to get it a nice finish. All right, it's time for a good old fashioned Ikea shopping trip. While I'm here, I might as well check out chairs just to see what they have. These are cute. This guy is beautiful, but I wonder if it's too big. Also, I wanna sit in it, but it's up on a ledge. This is nice. Oof. And you don't even get the seat cushion with it? Hmm. <laughs> the curtains that I came to get are on freaking sale. Today was a good day. Perfect. <laughs> the actual curtains don't need to be blackout because I have that blackout blind we're gonna put up. So I just want something that like looks nice. Does it feel that cheap, you know? There's so many different white curtains though, like what is the difference between all of them? This is nice. Maybe a little heavy though. Oh my god, this is nice. Linen, I didn't even know there was linen curtains at Ikea. $80 for curtains? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Those are so nice though. Okay. This feels linen-y too. It's not $80. Hmm. I don't know, there's so many options. That's a little bit different. That's like chevron-y. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Are these all one of a kind? I feel like they're all different, which I've never noticed these before, but these are really cool. Ooh. That's cool. The walls are now this orangey terracotta color and I really like it. I'm glad I didn't do all the walls this color because that would be way too much but just having it on the two outside walls and then the middle be white is really nice. I was walking up the stairs and you could just see this kind of orange glow coming from the room and it was really inviting. It felt like that room would be very warm which is a thing that I want to be in. So that's really starting to make the difference in here, turning this space into like a cozy, inviting space and a little less cold feeling space. But what also is really gonna help with that is changing up the whole bedding situation. So as you can tell, the current bedding is very blue toned, gray, blue, very cool toned. And I also wanna make that warm toned. So the big DIY I wanna do here is I want to DIY a duvet cover. I already have the duvet, love this duvet, but I wanna make kind of this same color-y vibe duvet cover for this. I had looked up ones that I really loved, but oh, they're so expensive. They're like $500 US for like a nice linen one that's in a beautiful burnt orange color. And I understand why they're that much because it's really nice material and made from sustainable sources, but that is just so much money. And I figure since I kind of know how to sew, I think I can tackle this myself. So I don't know what color exactly I want to do. I don't even know I'm going to be able to find the right fabric and color that I want in the fabric stores, but that will be the next journey. So before I actually do any of that, one thing I want to put up is I actually DIY'd myself a headboard for this bed. This DIY was in a video that already went live. I'm going to link it in the cards and below. 
it's essentially a hanging headboard because the current bed didn't come with a headboard or it wasn't built with a headboard. So I DIY'd my very own headboard to solve the lack of headboard situation. So I'm gonna put that up now. That, I think that's really gonna help me understand what color I wanna do the duvet in. So once to see that headboard with the new painted walls, we can move on to DIY and duvet cover. I can't find the other end cap to this curtain rod. That was a cup. Oh my god. Where did it go? Found it! And the cup is okay. All right, this will be round one of going to look for fabric samples. I don't think I'm gonna get anything today. I just wanna see basically what my options are. There could be a bunch of colors to pick from, or there could be literally nothing in the fabric and color I'm thinking, so I kinda just wanna know. Also, this fabric store is notorious for having the worst lighting in the store for being a fabric store, because I've bought many a fabric that looks good in the store, and then you bring it out into daylight, and it's a different color. So let's just go see what they have. All right, this is an option, but I think it's looking a little too brown for what I want. I want something a bit orangier or warmer, I think. This we think maybe it's oranger. I don't know if it's too orange. I'm being so particular about this, but this is nice. I might try and get a sample. Okay, it's round two looking for fabric. I have my <laughs> little fabric samples from the previous fabric store with me so we can compare, and today we're at a good old fabric land. This is velvet and I'm so tempted. Imagine a velvet duvet cover. How soft. This is somehow at the same time the best and worst fabric I've seen. It's like 60s shag carpet in like a mustard green yellow, but I want it. So after walking around the store for way too long, I decided to ask somebody and turns out they don't have linen. They don't carry linen, which is a bit odd to me. I don't know, I, fig I think that linen is used in a lot of really nice stuff, but I guess you can't get it from there. Or maybe this was just this location, but I don't know. They're like, no, sorry, we don't have it. So I guess that makes my decision pretty easy on where I'm gonna get my fabric from for the DIY duvet cover. And honestly, I'm not upset about it because the last thing I wanted was more things to decide between. And I like some of the options we found in the first place, so I guess that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so after comparing all of the samples, I decided to go with this burnt orange linen from the first fabric store. So I'm gonna go to the office right now and assemble it there because then I have all the floor space I want to work on this. So the fabric I bought was not wide enough to span the width of my king size duvet, so I'm cutting out four pieces, which I'll sew together in pairs to make two pieces for the front and the back of the duvet. See, there's a seam down the middle. But now, it's big enough that I can make it the right size. Once both pieces were the perfect size for my duvet, I'm sewing up three sides, keeping the top open to put the duvet inside. Okay, let's flip this inside out. Wow. So, I essentially just made a giant pillowcase for my duvet. A duvet is basically a giant pillow. <laughs> Plus, this linen fabric is actually really heavy, which is gonna be great, and I'm very excited because I think then it'll make my duvet even more like a weighted blanket, which I have one and I love to death. So now I need to take this home, put this on the duvet. The only thing I haven't done yet is put snaps along the open edge, but I can sew those on at home. <laughs> okay, but I'm actually so excited with how this turned out. It was like pretty much exactly what I was envisioning and hoping for So it's like such a good feeling when DIYs go that way. So moving onwards We're getting very close to the end. I know this has taken many days, but trust me. I'm excited. So next we're gonna tackle The blinds. So when I went to Ikea, I picked up these they are called oh gosh Leon Gap? Leon Gap? There was ones that were like I don't know, advertised as linen, and they were almost $80 for a pair, which is crazy in my opinion. And then these, I don't know, these said, where did I read it? Oh yeah, if you read the like materials on the back, this one is 100% linen as well, and it was almost half the price. But they weren't like advertising this one as linen. I don't know why. Something is up there. So, picked up these guys, they're white linen. They're gonna go up here. The only thing I don't know is, 
Hold on, stay with me. Do you see how the roof is like, got this crazy curve going on? I don't know where to end a curtain rod because normally you'd end it farther out than the window, but we don't have wall for that. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to play around and figure out what works. Okay, the curtain rod's just sitting up there, but like typically that's how much space you'd want to give the curtain rod outside of the window for it to look right for curtains to hang, but that's way too low to the window. So if I raise it up, then the curtain rod becomes smaller. I feel like I'm just going to have to pick somewhere sort of in the middle so that it doesn't look wrong on either side and just make the most of it, I guess. Okay, curtains are up and this place is so close to being finished. So the very last piece this is missing is finding that side chair that I really wanted. So I was looking online for secondhand furniture when this happened. Oh my god. Is that? Yes, that's right, the butterfly chair. Designed in Argentina in 1938. This has long been a piece of furniture that I've always wanted to have. It's beautiful. It's one of those things that's just I don't know, design history. And here it was on Kijiji for a super reasonable price. It is hard to find these things in good condition without breaking the bank. And I know this one definitely isn't original by any means, but it looks great and I love it. And I think it's gonna fit this place perfect. So let's go pick it up. We have a chair. Will it fit in my car? I don't wanna damage it. This guy has been broken for a long time. And I've kind of been in denial about it because you can't see it from the front, which is okay. But then I found this vintage thrifted beauty, which will replace this. Rip. Just kidding, still holding on by the cord. Oh, oh my God, more of it just broke. I'm a mess today. That was anticlimactic. Tick. All right, and with a few final touches later, we now have a completed bedroom. I am so happy with how this space turned out. Even though we basically still have all the same things that we started with, plus one new chair, this feels like an entirely brand new space. Switching up the color scheme, like the DIY duvet cover is one of my favorite things I've ever made. It's so soft and the color is just perfect. And then painting the two walls this really soft terracotta color just made this place feel so warm and cozy and homey and just like a place you want to hang out in, which is what I wanted to achieve starting this whole video. So maybe this video taught you a couple things, like maybe you don't have to switch out every single piece of furniture in your space to get what feels like a new room. Maybe sometimes just a shift in color is all it takes. Plus, I just love that we did a curtain here. I don't know why I never thought that I needed one until we did this video and it just made such a difference. I love it. If you like these sort of journey with me makeover videos, I recently redid my bathroom and it took kind of a 180 as well. So if you'd like to see a very similar style video, I'm gonna link that in the cards and below. Go check it out. I think you'll like that one a lot if you like this one as well. And if you just like this content overall, Make sure to subscribe to this channel because if you can't tell, we do this often. We have lots of fun doing it. So hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when we upload new makeover videos because we do those pretty often and they're pretty fun. So thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna try and link as many relevant things in this space too for you in the description below. So go on down there, check it out, check out the blog post. I will see you guys next time for a brand new video.